Hey, good morning, uh, Yard. Um, it's Mike, I made a video a while. First of all, good job. But before we go there, we'll talk about a little bit of the moment where I was salty the other day. Uh, let me be clear when I was salty about uh, Phaedra in front of the office. There's a couple things. Um, one, I'm not completely sold yet because we haven't seen a good product on the field. However, it's first year one. But when I look back, you know, sometimes you write versus you speak. Uh, let me be clear. I think the reason I made the point about the, the problem with the vets or this, a lot of it's blank. Um, when you look back at it, the root cause, you know, the 2016 year Prescott of the Super Bowl, we had a monumental collapse. It's never been seen. Um, yeah, we talk about Demi and Mutroff all the time on here, you know, and, and the things, you know, there's a lot of slamming on it, but in reality, it had a pretty successful run, right? But what did we see? We saw this inherent ghost resign everybody, you know, no matter what, you know, it was almost like Blank had this billionaire's pride of strategy just collapse and just kept going thing. So I think a lot of this, the, the, these new guys, you know, Terry Fontenot and Arthur Smith are navigating. I still think there's a problem with William Flowery Brown. I think it's, personally, I think there's a lot of McKay influence still, and a lot of Smith influence. However, let me also temper, I think we've seen with TF, and um, I don't think AS, I don't think Arthur Smith really cares about politics. He seems to not be like Quinn, not too involved in him. I think Terry Fontenot is doing a very good job of navigating through all this. Uh, so I think we get through. However, it needs her to make this great decision. I, and, and maybe that just comes with time, but you got to handle these vets, man. And that, to me, that's just still a problem. You know, letting it linger. You know, I, I'm of the, maybe of the Belichick thing, you know. Adelius Thomas got to be a pain in the ass. He cut him that day, you know. That's how you work, in my opinion. Or you move them on. But anyway, I just want to clarify that, so... Do I not have complete faith in this new regime yet? No. But are they doing some right things? Yes. So, back to the draft and more important. First of all, Jay, great video. Um, I'll say it right off the bat. I was a little bit leery of the Drake London um, pick. Obviously, they got ahead of the game on the wide receiver run. So, you know, hey, good on the GM. Uh, London to me, let me clarify what my problem with it, and, and not even God knows this more than anybody, right? Um, I don't dislike London. In fact, I, not even God, I, I mean, Clarence and I had a lot of conversations on the side. Very talented man. The reason why I was not as fond of London at eight is because of lower extremity energies. Hit that ankle. Um, that's it. They obviously probably haven't checked out medically. If he's healthy, I really like him. There's some. I call it separation issues, and I, th <laughs> I was a little salty. I think I put out, yeah, you remind me of a uh, guy who's a receiver from Ole Miss. I had on the Lacan, Lacan Trail Trail. Well, he could be, right? Um, but after my saltiness of not getting a defensive player early when I went back, look, I was incorrect. Um, the reason I think, I don't think it's his speed. He's not really a elite speed guy, but he really does high pump, point the ball well. Um, he uses his arms and body, and you see his basketball uh, thing. That's a good thing. Um, I st still a little bit leery of that ankle injuries. Um, low extremity injuries are, can be chronic, but you know, look, Julio had a low extremity injury, it worked out. That said, let me go back, <laughs> re clarify. When you watch the, the video, the tape, whatever you want to call it, highlight, even highlights, right? His are rather boring sometimes, but what I have noticed when I sat back and I rewatched it, okay, two things. One, he high points the ball really well, and he snatches. Yeah, he's very much a basketball rebounder. Uh, he plays like a power forward. Check, right? He's obviously got left. Uh, the other thing, he does break a lot of tackles. He's a tough guy. So, assuming his injuries are good and he's healthy, you know what? Hell of a pick, okay? I am salty. We didn't get Jermaine Johnson. But, that said, day two, this staff, again, they're not going to win me over until we fucking win some games. You know, we actually look like a team. But, let me just say, second day draft is probably the most exciting I've ever, excited I've ever been. One, I'm going to go out, shout out to all my boys in the yard. We all threw out positionally what we thought we needed. And I think we've all been on the same back. We all said, linebacker, edge, right? Receiver, right? Although, y'all motherfuckers, other than Lethal and JD, were busting my balls at that Dallas game by getting receivers. So let's just put that out there, Clarence. 
and all you other motherfuckers. Or was that the yard? Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah. Don't need receivers. Remember that shit? Come on now. Only my boy Jason, only my boy JD came to my defense. We need receivers. So just throwing that out. This guy here, we were all over that. My three, three amigos. But <laughs> I'm just digressing. Anyway, when we go down to it, um, day, day two is fantastic, dude. Um, our own Ebikiti, Ebikiti, whatever his name is. I've been watching him a while. This guy's explosive. 38 inch vertical, uh, four or five speed. Plays like a maniac. Night of dog, night of God. Clarence, if you haven't watched him much yet, watch him. You're going to like him. He is a dog. He may resemble Vic Beasley, size-wise, speed-wise. He does not play like Vic. He plays like a dog. Dude, you're going to love him. Dude, don't know he's only 250, 255. Fast. Great first step. Um, love, love, love the pick. That made the wide receiver pick hurt a hell of a lot less. You know, still would like Jermaine, but, hey, you know, I'm getting good here. Uh, Troy Anderson, I think, uh, I think, I think me and, I'm going to say me and Jed had a long conversation about him um, before. Um, at, at lethal, I think, I think Jason did too. Anderson's a fantastic athlete. Uh, we were first watching highlights up here in the yard, I remember. You know, you saw his highlights as a quarterback and a running back. I mean, got a fantastic athlete. Um, I saw an analyst made a good point. Yeah, yeah, I know some of the boards probably saw it about the Kobe Dean. And, you know, who wouldn't want the Kobe Dean? And good on the Kobe Dean getting drafted, right? By the way, sorry I had to wait so long. But the thing I liked about uh, Anderson is Anderson's not being asked to be the mic. He's asked to be a wheel and chase linebacker. And, you know, basically, you know, the game, what their game is, and it makes sense when you look at this D-line and you look at the tight uh, edge outside linebackers you got you know the game comes out he's asked to come downhill fast make the play or run and chase with a lot of uh, tight ends and cover and he can do it and can blitz uh he's a little raw but dude watch him sideline to sideline man that kid can cover ground he covers ground like a fucking safety i mean fuck, he covers ground like a quarterback i mean pure athleticism i know you hate comps um uh, Clarence, but he almost looks like young Erlacher. Not doesn't have the instincts of Erlacher. Erlacher had much more defined instincts, you know. But remember, he had swapped over. Really. But remember how Erlacher just had range and that size, and you're like, how can that big man go across? Watch Anderson play. I mean, it's just stupid how much ground he could cover. Uh, next pick on it, man. Desmond Ritter, JD, give me a shout out. Yeah, I've been on Desmond's jock for a while. I think Desmond's a winner. Uh, no, Jed, um, um, Jake, you're right. Um, game manager is probably a good term, and I know you don't mean it derisively, nor does anybody in here. But I like about Ritter. I, I got hooked into Ritter. Um, it was two years ago I was watching Cincinnati, whenever it just started to become that that program, and it's got this fiery side. He 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 reminds me a lot. People say Mariota. Maybe he's got Mario the wheels. He reminds me a lot of Matt Ryan in some ways. And it, and the reason I say that is obviously he has wheels of Matt. And he's kind of that soft, quieter, more mature, but he's, he's, he's fiery. He don't care. You know, he gets into it. He'll get into a player's ass. And I think him going in the third round is actually better. Uh, Matt obviously came from a program where, you know, you know, take Matt Ryan back in the day. Matt Ryan in Boston College was it, the big man on campus. You know, he's flinging around 4,600 yards. I think he was his senior year when they did, you know, 4,000 yards were a big deal, you know, to a quarterback. And I think what you're seeing with Dez is the right situation. He is, look, he's going to be pissed. But he's calm. He's unflappable. Um, somebody made some comment about his processing. I don't see anything wrong with his processing time at all. I see he's stayed within the system. What's wrong with that? Nothing. I think, uh, and you know, you can't deny that four or five uh, speed. I think, um, I think Jake didn't send your video compared to Dak Prescott. That's not a bad thing. Dak Prescott was compared to kind of like a Matt Ryder uh, when he came up a little bit, and that's okay. Uh, I think that might be a logical successor. It'll be interesting if Des can actually push for a starting job. The good news is the third round, he doesn't have to. And the good news for us is Mariota, Mariota which again, um, 
<laughs> not convinced Mariota can get through the whole year of the injured. Um, we got somebody in the back. Um, one thing I want to address too, Dez is a highly durable uh, quarterback. Go back and look at him. He's not banged up a lot. And that's again by that matter, right? He's available. Played four years. Uh, he can any level. He, his arm doesn't wire you, but he makes the right throws. It makes right those. Um, I'm glad we picked him over Malik Willis. I, look, I stood by it all along. I told y'all in the beginning, you know, and many of y'all probably were even angry. I don't think Malik Willis was a first round talent. Um, I do think Malik Willis is going to the right situation for the record, and I'm proud of the young man. I think he's a good young man. He's going to the Titans. He can sit. Time in, but Malik is does not process well. If you watch Malik Willis against Army, watch Malik Willis against Louisiana, you watch Malik Willis against Ole Miss. And even some of the lower tier, Malik Willis made some boneheaded stuff. And a lot of that is at Liberty offense. But let's also understand that you got to expand the playbook. One thing I like about Des Ritter is it coming from a, you know, Cincinnati ran a pro offense, essentially. Um, they did lean heavy on the run. They did have a good defense. Uh, they did take their shots downfield, play action. Well, that's what AS wants to do. Uh, and, and they also played the offense, if you look at it, was very close to Arthur Smith, which is a kind of Eckhart Perkins. Eckhart Perkins with some West Coast principles. So I think it is a good thing. Uh, I think he can come, he might ascend to the throne sooner than later. But you know, if he doesn't, dude, getting him a third round, um, he's definitely got first round measurables. He's got a first round body of work. Uh, he doesn't wow you. Then again, Matt Ryan probably wouldn't have wowed you this day and age of quarterbacks. Let's put that out there. You might have a 15 year start. So that's a good thing. If nothing else, you got a hell of a backup that you can groom and you can develop. You know, it's the same. Marietta gets better. Um, next pick on it. Um, D'Angelo Malone, back to you, Clarence. You're going to love this kid you ever seen. He's just a dog. I mean, a local kid. He, to me, watching him play, and I can't remember who brought him up. Or it may have been Jed, or it was Jed or the Falcon 07, but. Pound for pound, he's one of the most furious little dudes ever. I mean, I call him a little dude. He's bigger than I am. I'm like 185, 180, right? Dude's like 240. But, you know, NFL-wise, he's, he's skinny and maxed out. He's rocked up. He's like maxed out. But, yeah, he's just a dog. Uh, you, you can't go wrong with that. You know, you got a, a guy that's an athlete, got a dog. So, I like to wear edges. I mean, look at how our edges were for. And again, I, I think something that I brought up a long time ago, and Jed and you and I and Clarence were back we also got in that linebacker side with Rashawn Evans in the sign. You know, whether they keep Debo or not, you got Michael Walker, now you got Anderson. Now you can, now you can put pressure on multiple edges. That front seven is looking a lot better. Um, what I do like about both, uh, I'm going to call him A rather than AK, whatever. AK and Arnold and, and and Malone, both can come off wide down. You can do multiple fronts. Um, really, really like the draft. Going forth, uh, so, so again, the wide receiver pick, I love London. Um, obviously, I, I would have rather gone Edge or Hamilton, uh, but the pick makes sense uh, if the pick is healthy, which I'm assuming they did the deal just we got a winner, and we needed wide receivers. So, the way I'm seeing off this stack up looks nice. Um, uh, we talked about our line. Could we have a line still happen? Sure, there's some good ones out there. Um, I can also understand, you know, um, they, they feel comfortable with that. Nothing wrong with that. I think our wide receiver course got an interest in that because you've got the big guy, Tate, 6'5, 230. Got uh, CP, so 6'3, 240, something like that. 6'2. Pitt 6'6", 250, now you're in London, 6'4", 210, 220, whatever. Uh, Darby if he is a big boy, 6'1", 210. You got some real physical mismatches going on. And then you got Fersker, another 6'5", you know, 250, move tight end. Uh, this is a really interesting lineup. One, one they can all block. Uh, two, they have some vertical skills, but three, they, they, they're just mismatches. Who do you put on these guys? I mean, you put a corner, mismatch our favorite. You put a safety, well, 
Let's match our favor. Uh, uh, most linebackers not named Parsons can't run these guys. Devin White maybe can't, but you can't put Devin White on, you know, on London and, you know, Tate and, you know, and uh, Pitts. So I like the way his offense shape. But I don't like the run game still. I, I'm sorry, I don't buy Damian Williams. Um, Damian Williams, Mike Davis, CP, I agree with Jake. He's a gadget guy. I'm sorry, he's a gadget guy. I don't see him as a primary running back. All of a sudden, that's so much. I'm hoping they attack running game. We'll see. Uh, but so far, offense is about the only area. I can still see center being there. There's a couple of them out there. So I think, I believe Lindstrom's brother's still out there. Luke Fortner, I don't know if he got picked up. There's some still decent guards. There's still some decent guards. So a line, time for picking. I don't mind the trade up at all. It made sense. Go get you an explosive edge. Uh, defense, I'm actually pretty happy with. Uh, surprise, um, maybe I had a veteran, but I'm not unhappy. This is one of the better defenses that we've seen in a while. Um, linebacker, of course, suddenly looks a little bit more like a strength again. Um, you know, you've got AO, you know, you've got, uh, you know, Reza Carter, and now you've got, you know, these two speedy guys. So, all that said, how do we go for? I don't know. Um, I like to think running back, maybe a Zemir White, maybe maybe they go up and get Spiller. I think Spiller would be perfect back for it, but, you know, at this point, I, they get it. I like Damian Pierce. Damian Pierce is still out there. Jerome Ford's out there. Um, I do think running back is probably still a need. I wouldn't mind saying a tight end. One tight end to keep an eye on might be Charlie Kohler. They met with him. He's another tight end. He's a big move guy. Uh, if you look at the past rosters, there's a lot of tight ends. Right now, we're kind of too deep. We got Pitts. We got, um, you know, uh, first third. And I think we got Pess as a third round, third, third player. So, they could go a number of ways. Um, D tackle, I think Chris Hinton, maybe. A couple guys under John Ridway. Watch out for him. Either way you go, I, I like the way the team's being built. Um, I think it's a recognizable team. Uh, Again, if, if London turns out healthy and plays to what he's able to, I mean, let me just put this about London. London has a statistic that sticks with me. He, so in eight games, I think he had 1,084 yards, seven touchdowns, and 88 receptions. That's phenomenal. And his quarterback shit. I mean, I know everybody on the boards would be like, draft that whatever his fucking name is from USA. No, he's a shit quarterback. Um, so if, if the receiver we got turns out, we can stop right now. We got an A. Um, need a running back. Um, definitely. So it'll be interesting. Anyway, I hope that clarifies a lot. Um, I'm not salty. I still, look, I'm from Missouri. You got to show me, baby. Can y'all do something with it? That said, I think they built a great foundation. I still think the Grady situation needs to be resolved. Need to sign the man, make him happy, or trade his ass. I mean, it's that simple. Um, and again, let me clarify back. I came for maybe is blank, maybe blanks, and is too still involved. You know, um, but I think I'd like I would like personally see no more lingering um, veteran things. You know, uh, I think Matt Ryan we got lucky. Matt's not Baker Mayfield. Um, Matt was mature and used the situation, but what does it take? You know. You know, you, you, we can say what we want. We know the Julio situation where it wore down a locker room last year. We know the Calvin Real or really whatever shit. You know, there's a culture issue. I think the AS and TF are addressing the culture issue, but I think you got to go one step further. And I think either D, I think it's a Debo. I think Debo, to me, Debo and um, Grady Jarrett both have to be addressed immediately, personally. Uh, I, I, I'm an organizational guy by trade, and I spend a lot of time fixing organizations. And these things linger hard, and guys, with allergies. Um, you got you to cut bait, or you, you got to extend them, make them part of your fold. So if they can do that, I'll become much more a believer. You know, so whether it's trading them, cutting them, they're not cut Brady, obviously, but or extend them, make an announcement. Um, but I love the draft. I love the foundation. Um, Hopefully last year's picks together you know, this thing gave us a good nucleus. Uh, again, we'll have to see. All right, go Falcons. You guys have a good time. Bye.